Aristotle said, Nothing is more challenging than the ability to study, debate, and think through a concept without immediately accepting or rejecting it. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. And F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote, The truest sign of intelligence is the ability to entertain two contradictory ideas simultaneously. In other words, one of the truest marks of intelligence is being able to consider opposite ideas without immediately accepting or rejecting one of them. Every issue has at least two sides, usually three sides, or more. And if you've only researched or thought about one side of an issue, and just completely rejected the other sides without any consideration, that is the highest form of willful ignorance. In my experience, this is the main dividing factor between the two types of people you come across when discussing flat earth or other conspiracy type subjects. In school, as children, we're presented with the globe heliocentric model and told it is absolutely true and correct and proven beyond any shadow of a doubt and everyone has known it for hundreds or thousands of years and only your stupid ignorant ancient ancestors believed that the earth was a flat motionless plane. So once you hear that, the vast majority of students will never consider that there could possibly be any other side to this story, because we've been told there isn't. But in reality, there are other models of the earth. The globe is not the only possible shape of the earth that people have believed in or found evidence for. For thousands of years, people had plenty of evidence for and believed in a level stationary plain earth. So there are two sides to this story. And in fact, there's more. Some people believe in a concave earth. Rather than a convex sphere, they believe you're living inside a sphere. So there's three sides of the story now. And if you want to do your due diligence and actually find the truth, instead of just being willfully ignorant and pretending other options don't exist, other evidence isn't out there, the truly intelligent person, the true detective, the one who is going to get to the truth, must examine all sides of the story, must look at all evidence, and do so with an open mind, skeptical, critically thinking, not with a foregone conclusion, full of ego, assuming they already know the answer to be whatever they were first told. No, you have to actually do your due diligence and research it. Research everything they say about the globe everything they say about the flat earth, everything they say about the concave earth. Only then can you come to a truly educated and intelligent decision. The vast majority of people in the world have never looked into the evidence for a flat earth. They were told it is convex, and they believed it. Now that the flat earth renaissance is kicking off, and people are challenging their friends and family members, about their previously held beliefs, there's becoming a clear dividing line between the two types of people out there. The first type is so sure of whatever they were first taught and told and believed that they cannot even for a second hold in their mind the possibility that what they were taught could be wrong. And along with this unearned confidence they have in their ignorance, usually comes quite the ego. People who are able to entertain opposing ideas without immediately accepting or rejecting them do so with a level of egolessness, because they are withholding judgment for days, weeks, months, while they consider opposing ideas. 
truly intelligent people need to be able to consider opposing ideas for days, weeks, or months without judging, without making a decision, to be able to adequately consider all the evidence. If you just find the first piece of evidence and immediately make your judgment, how reliable can your judgment be? Imagine a judge who, rather than listening to the entire body of evidence over days of a court proceeding, just listens to the first piece of evidence given by the prosecutor and immediately smacks his gavel down and says guilty. That is what the Globe Defenders are doing. These people have not even considered or researched the flat earth side or the concave earth side. Or, I mean, there's other stuff, this square earth. There's people that believe the earth to be many different things. And it's disingenuous to just go along to get along with whatever you were told as a child. And you hear this all the time from globe believers. They'll come to you and say, if you were given proof of the globe, undoubtable proof, then would you change your mind and believe in the globe? Well, yeah, of course we would. All flat earthers would. And all flat earthers have gone through that process to become flat earthers, because we were all taught the globe and believed it as children, just like you. The only difference between current flat earthers and current globe earthers is flat earthers actually did their due diligence in researching and then changed their mind based on that evidence. Globe earthers have not done that. So there is a precedent to say that, of course, flat earthers, if presented with adequate evidence, are able and do change their minds based on that evidence. However, globe earthers, there is no evidence that they will ever or could ever change their mind, because they haven't. They still believe the first thing they were taught as little children, and instead of diligently researching the opposite side of the story, and, as Aristotle said, holding opposite ideas simultaneously, being the mark of true intelligence. Yeah, no, they can't do that, because their heads are so full of ego that the second they hear somebody believing in such a silly, stupid idea as a flat earth, they jump at the opportunity to shit all over them. Their ego just jumps up and down with joy that... <gasps> There's somebody in this day and age that actually thinks the Earth is flat? But I remember everything that I was taught in third grade science class. So if it's the mark of true intelligence to be able to hold opposite ideas simultaneously without deciding, it must be the mark of true ignorance to immediately start mocking someone who tries to give you evidence for the other side of the argument. Now, if you're one of these globe defenders listening to this, because maybe a friend of yours sent you this, have you ever considered that maybe you could be wrong? Even if you feel supremely confident that the Earth is a globe, what is it inside you that needs to mock and belittle others who are skeptical and questioning this supposed fact? What is it inside you that feels the need to smirk and sneer and roll your eyes at someone for simply looking into an idea that you don't know about, an opinion that you don't hold. Is it really that hilarious? Some of these people have been laughing for like seven or eight years now. The joke's old, man. You are the joke. You are laughing at your own ignorance. There's becoming a clear divide now between people who are truly open-minded, skeptical, critical thinkers, and people who have so much hubris and ego and are so narrow-minded that they can't even for a second entertain an opposing idea. These people are unable to control themselves and just lash out at anyone trying to offer them a different opinion. So you've got these two types of people on the flat earth. 
and I recommend trying to identify which type of person you're talking to before wasting your time, energy, and reputation around certain people that couldn't care less. If you identify someone as being an open-minded, skeptical, critical thinker that's able to entertain opposing ideas simultaneously without instantly judging, well then you've got a good friend, and you've got someone you can talk to about just about anything without having to be worried. So this is a good filter, not just for flat earth or conspiracies, but for truly intelligent people and truly compassionate people. It takes a level of egolessness, it takes a level of compassion, to be able to sit down and listen to someone who has what you believe to be a completely crazy idea, but to do so patiently and without interruption or sarcasm or mocking. You can still ask all the questions you want to ask of your Flat Earth friends. We want to talk to you about this subject. We're just tired of the attitude. We all know how much the mainstream media lies, and how many things throughout history have turned out to be different than when they were first presented to us. So can we stop acting so holier than thou and high and mighty about this particular subject? Especially those of you who haven't even read a Flat Earth book. People like myself have read upwards of 50 Flat Earth books. If you haven't even read one, and you want to laugh and mock based on your ignorance, you're basically putting up a brick wall between us so that we cannot communicate. And again, this is not just for Flat Earth. When your partner, your friends, your family try to bring something that's important to them, to you, and you knee-jerk ridicule or mock or belittle them, rather than being patient and compassionate, and actually sitting down and listening to them before immediately reacting, you're going to find life's a whole lot better if you can do that. You're going to find yourself having to apologize a whole lot less. You're going to find yourself being a whole lot more respected and on the side of truth more often than not. Anyone that comes at you with sarcasm, or mocks you, or ridicules you, is not ready, and not worth your time and energy. And rather than putting yourself out there for people that are going to treat you with this kind of an attitude, I recommend calling them out on their attitude. I recommend pointing to the fact that they're belittling you before you've even started your conversation. I recommend changing the conversation to their ego, changing the conversation to their reaction to what you've said. If they can't patiently listen and have a conversation about the Flat Earth, then don't bother talking about the Flat Earth. Talk about the fact that they can't talk about the Flat Earth. Talk about the fact that they can't hold two ideas simultaneously in their head without immediately judging and mocking one of them. Talk about the fact that they're so willfully ignorant that they can't even do their due diligence long enough to find out if they've been lied to. Talk about the fact that you've got better things to do than get an attitude from someone you're trying to help. And don't waste your time trying to give them evidence or proofs or debunk their claims or get into fire wars back and forth about gravity and Coriolis forces or whatever. It's a complete waste of time for these types of people. These types of people just want to argue. They just want to be right. Their egos are like Swiss cheese, so full of holes that they are grasping onto their need to be right. And they, what they found is the Flat Earth, the most ridiculous thing in the world for someone to be wrong about. So they come running over with glee because they think they've found the stupidest people on Earth that now they can make fun of endlessly. If you notice your average globe believer, the ones full of ego and giving you attitude when you talk about Flat Earth, oftentimes these were the teacher's pets. 
the big nerds, the brown nosers. And what they're doing is they think they've found the dumb person in class and they get to show up how smart they are. They get to regurgitate everything from this lesson. You can see it in their eyes and their energy. They get all excited and giddy. They're so happy that you believe something so stupid and they get to be the smart one. So rather than just sitting there feeding their ego by allowing them to think they're being the smart one, I recommend when you identify one of these willfully ignorant, egoistic ignoramuses, change the conversation from trying to even discuss the flat earth to discussing their willful ignorance, their cognitive dissonance, and their ego's lack of ability to engage in adult conversation, and then move on. Don't waste any more time than that with these people. Leave them to their globe earth echo chambers, while the rest of humanity gets on with enlightening themselves. Eventually, and it's coming to that point, there's not going to be anybody left listening to them. All their friends are flat earthers now. I was just contacted by a very prominent non-flat earther who everyone around him, all his friends, family members, people he respects, are becoming flat earthers now to the point that he is finally opening his mind to the subject and finally stopping this attitude that he's had for so many years, instantly rejecting and belittling anyone who claims the earth is flat. And that's encouraging and props to him. I would really like to see more of that from these globe earth zealots. A little bit of humbleness. We all had to do it. Us current flat earthers, we all had to humble ourselves to the fact that we were lied to. And first, just to the fact that maybe we were lied to. That's the first step. That's the step we all took. That's all we're asking. Those of you who think you're being so scientific, that's how you do science. Skepticism. Critical thinking. Looking into all sides of the argument. Doing actual experiments. Gathering empirical data. This is what flat earthers are doing. While globe earthers are just regurgitating what they learned in their grade school textbooks with a big smirk on their face. So if you recognize yourself in this, if you have mocked or belittled friends or family members for talking about Flat Earth or other conspiracy subjects, consider trying a different approach. Let's have a real conversation. Globe Earthers keep saying they want to debate, debate, like we're arguing about what color to change the White House to or something. That would be a debatable subject. The objective, empirical, measurable shape of the earth beneath our feet is not a debatable subject. And people who want to begin the conversation this way are being disingenuous and closed-minded. We don't need to debate the globe versus the flat earth. We need to talk about it. We need to discuss it openly, honestly, patiently, and without the attitude. What passes for debate nowadays is just arguing over the top of one another and making ad hominem attacks. What we need is open conversation and listening. And even more than that, we need research. If you haven't actually read an entire Flat Earth book or watched a full Flat Earth documentary with an open mind, you really have no right to your holier-than-thou mentality, and it would be awesome if you could humble yourselves enough to do so. The last video on my channel would be an excellent introduction for those of you who haven't. The top 20 proofs Earth is not a spinning globe. It's just over an hour long. Please do me, yourselves, and the rest of the world a favor, and watch this with an open, skeptical mind. For the first time in your life, consider the possibility that your senses are true, and that your common sense and lived experience that tells you that you're standing upright on a level stationary plane with the sun, moon, and stars 
revolving over and around you, consider that that could be the reality, that what you experience is real. And do as Aristotle said, and hold two contradictory ideas in your mind simultaneously, without judging them. I guarantee you, if you're able to do that long enough to do your due diligence in researching the flat earth, you, like every one of us, will become a flat earther.